The if-then-else column outputs different values depending on other data in your sheet. For example, if room available is set to true, produce available. Or if the group number is larger than 10, produce the value large group. Let's look at an example together. In this task management app, we have items that are marked complete or incomplete by a switch component. When the switch is off, the status is false, and when the switch is on, the status is true. We want each item to display different data depending on its status. For example, a green check mark when it's true, and a clock symbol when it's false. We can do this through the use of an if then else column. After I select the if then else column, we see our first case appear. The first part of a case is made of a condition that you're testing for, which is the if part, and then what you want the column to produce if that condition's met, which is the then part. Our condition is as follows. If the status is checked, produce a tick sign. You can see in the data editor that the items which meet this criteria are now showing our tick sign, but the items that don't meet it are blank. In this example, using a switch component, there's only one other possibility. So we can move to the else column, which finishes off the other part of our case. Whatever we put in the else section will appear if our condition is not met. Now we've created a computed column, we can use these values in our app, just like with any other column. These columns will also update right away as our data changes, or when we add items. With switches, the outcomes are binary meaning you only have two options. It's either true or false. But not everything is binary. When things belong in multiple categories, that's when you start to introduce multiple conditions into your case. Let's say we have an app that helps a team manage incoming inventory. Each product has an SKU or product code that explains what category that product lives in. So we can use the if-then-else column to search for these text strings and categorize them. We can say, if product code contains RDE, then it's part of the Rhode Island collection. If it contains PRS, it's part of the Paris collection. And we can continue doing this for all our other categories. If we wanted to catch anything that didn't have a correct product code, we could put uncategorized in the else section. The if-then-else column can also understand date values. Here we have a list of books that we've lent out from a library. We have a date column that lists when that book was lent out and also a column that calculates the due date. We can create a rule which works out which books are overdue. To do this, we create an if-then-else column that says if the due date is before now, then produce the value overdue. Else do nothing 